Hi, everybody. I'm Dan Clydman, Editor-in-Chief of Yahoo News, and welcome to this bonus episode of Yahoo News' Conspiracy Land, a new podcast series on the murder of Seth Rich brought to you by Skullduggery. I'm here with my colleague and Skullduggery co-host Mike Isikoff, Yahoo News' Chief Investigative Correspondent and the host of Conspiracy Land, and Biana Goladriga, the veteran news broadcaster who's reported for ABC News, CBC News, is currently a CNN contributor, and is our former colleague at Yahoo. In these special episodes, we will tell the story behind the story of Conspiracy Land, explore the larger themes that this tangled and tragic case raises, and hear from Mike what it was like to report on the Seth Rich murder as he plumbed the depths of the dark netherworld of American political conspiracies. Each bonus podcast will be available with the episode it corresponds to. Today, we're discussing episode four, Fox News Fiction. All right, Mike Isikoff, Biana, welcome back. Yeah. All right, so Isikoff, how did this story get to Fox News? Well, excellent question. And I should point out that Fox News and Sean Hannity give the Seth Rich conspiracy the sort of ultimate push. There's a week in May of 2017 when Sean Hannity is shouting it from the rooftops, doing segment after segment. Other Fox regulars, Newt Gingrich, Lou Dobbs, they're all chiming in. And what's their message? This undercuts the Russian Hannity, narrative. Hannity, arguably this having the biggest shows, platform. Yes. And you know, look, the biggest number one in cable news, right? And his you radio know, show. Biggest and his radio show. But what we do in episode four is examine the question, how did it get there? How did this story come about? And there is an absolutely fascinating backstory uh, with all sorts of twists and turns about how this story migrates from what was then still, you know, the sort of fringes of the internet, the sort of alt-right sites, to what is in conservative media as mainstream as you get, Fox News, right? And it starts with a guy named Ed Butowski. In the last episode, we talked about Jack Berkman, the D.C. lobbyist. Ed Butowski is quite the character. I think we call him quirky in his own right. A Dallas money man, financier, manages uh, the financial assets for professional athletes, but he's like a political kibitzer in Republican Party, conservative party circles. He uh, watched the Republican convention uh, from the box of Sheldon Adelson in Cleveland, uh, the um, biggest Republican donor of all. He um, had a relationship with Steve Bannon, had been on uh, Bannon's radio show a few times, so they knew each other. He had was on a first-name basis with Sean Spicer. He apparently had drafted material for the Republican National Committee when Spicer was the um, chief of communications. So he had these relations and he decides to glom on to the Seth Rich case for much the same motivation as everybody else in conservative circles, Trumpian circles did, because if you could prove that it was Seth Rich who leaked to WikiLeaks, you undercut the Russia story, you undercut the Russia investigation. But one of the uh, sadder parts for me was the role of Seymour Hirsch, you know, one of my journalistic heroes, a guy who has done groundbreaking investigations that I've admired for years from Milai in Vietnam to Abu Ghraib in, in Iraq. But, you know, Hirsch, and we had him on our podcast, uh, Skullduggery, right. at one point, you know, in his later years, uh, has gotten a little looser than he was when he was reporting at the New York Times, and he likes to shoot his mouth off. So somebody tells Butowski, to call Seymour Hirsch, that Hirsch has stuff on the rich murder. And Butowski calls and, of course, secretly tapes the phone calls. Hirsch doesn't know it. And Cy shoots off his mouth and said, oh, yeah, you know, I know how this whole fucking thing started. And, you know, this whole Russia thing, it's, uh, you know, this is a John Brennan operation. He invented it, you know, which is not really true. And then he goes on to say he has a source who told him that the FBI had done a forensic analysis of uh, Seth Rich's computer and had found communications with WikiLeaks. So 
So Butowski goes crazy about this. I'm like, oh my God, this is exactly what I'm looking for, right? Exactly. And he presses Hirsch to give him a copy of the report. And Hirsch says, well, I don't really have it. And then the more Butowski presses, the more Hirsch says, you know, look, I don't even know if this is true, what I'm telling you. But Butowski heard what he wanted. He sends it to the Rich family. He convinces the Rich family to let him hire a private investigator on their behalf with him putting up the money. Butowski goes to this guy, Rod Wheeler, a former D.C. cop who was a Fox News contributor, and the two of them start conspiring in a way to develop a story for Fox News that could support the Seth Rich conspiracy narrative. And there's a discrepancy between what Ed Butowski says his conversation with the Rich family entailed and what they say came out of the conversation. He says that they said something along the lines of, we know what our son did. Right. Their version of that was, we know our son and he would never do something like this. Absolutely. And look, there's a discrepancy between what Butowski says and almost everybody else he talks to when you ask about. But he provided you the audio of his taped conversation with Hirsch. Yes, he did. You don't have any of his conversation with the Rich family. No, no, no. That, That was not, as far as we know, there's no tape of that. But what we did do is we checked something that Butowski had told both the Rich family and Seymour Hirsch on that tape phone call. And that is, he has a friend who met with Julian Assange in the Ecuadorian embassy in London during the closing weeks of the election. And Assange told his friend that Seth Rich was his source for the uh, DNC emails. Now, Butowski has been saying this for years. We tracked down the friend. Because Butowski didn't tell you who the friend was. You asked but didn't tell you. You were able to track this person we, down. We tracked the person down because, a although I discussed this with Butowski, another source who Butowski had talked to had identified the person. And this radio talk show host, Ellen Ratner, and she fits perfectly as the person, as the description of the person that Butowski had provided to the Rich family and to Cy Hirsch. Her brother, Michael Ratner, the late Michael Ratner, was the lawyer for WikiLeaks. And he's passed away, but Ellen Ratner and her other brother, the developer Bruce Ratner, went to see Assange in October of 2016 and did meet with him. But when we tracked Ellen Ratner down and asked about, did Assange tell you about Seth Rich? She said the subject never Never came came up. up. And in fact, she says she never discussed it. She met Ed in a green room. Yes. And her version of the story is they never discussed this either. Well, she never knew anything (laughs) about Julian Assange telling her about Seth Rich's being a source because it never, the subject never came up. She did, in fact, meet with Assange. That part is true, Jack. But the key part turns out to be, according to Ellen Ratner, entirely not true. So, Mike, tell us a little more about Rod Wheeler, because he's a colorful character and yeah. he's a key you know, figure in the chain of the in terms of the migration right. uh, from conspiracy land to Fox News. Right, exactly. So Rod Wheeler, you know, he was a Fox News contributor. He would come on, you know, and talk about whenever there were law enforcement issues uh, that Fox wanted to talk about. Now, but he was uh, he, sorry to cut you off, but he yeah. was. Some of the stuff he was saying on was crazy. I mean, he had this story about this. I love this about the pistol packing lesbian gangs all over the country. Which he had to retract. Who were were attacking people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was complete nonsense. And he goes on Bill O'Reilly at one point and talks about how Washington, D.C. is plagued by these pistol packing lesbian gangs that are going around indoctrinating young kids into uh, homosexuality and threatening people. But I thought that was actually a really important moment moment because it showed that Fox News and some of their anchors had a predisposition to either believe or at least propagate 
these crazy stories and if conspiracy you can, theories. If you have a guest who'll say what you want them to say, you put them on the air. Although, as we point out, and we talk to a number of Fox producers and other people at Fox, there was real wariness about Wheeler for precisely that reason. There were some people that, you know, just well, absolutely not refused enough wariness. to put him on. Well, not on the big, you know, not when it came to the O'Reillys and the Hannity's yeah. in the bureaucracy of Fox, there were people who had their antenna up about Rod Wheeler. But then Rod Wheeler becomes, he gets hired by Butowski as the investigator for the Rich family. The Rich family has had no contact with him at that point. They didn't know Rod Wheeler from a hole in the wall. And Rod Wheeler becomes this go-to guy for Fox to put on to talk about the Seth Rich case. One of the interesting things in this episode, which um, I hope people focus on, is at some point, Wheeler goes to see the detective, Detective Della Camera, who was in charge of the Seth Rich case, and writes up a memo in which the detective says they have absolutely no evidence that connects Seth Rich's to death to his work at the DNC at all, and the FBI has nothing to do with the case. I'm the detective, Della Camera tells him. I've never heard from the FBI. They've never asked me any questions. They've never come to see the evidence in the case. So, There were some red flags about what Fox was about to report very soon, based on what the original claim from Butowski and Seymour Hersh. There were red flags from the get-go on this, but it doesn't stop the freight train. And to quickly tie this in as we end here to the Trump administration, Butowski and Wheeler end up having a short meeting with Sean Spicer. Yes, yes. And they and there are uh, differing accounts of what took place in the meeting. Spicer wouldn't talk to us. No surprise there. Butowski says, you know, as soon as the subject of the Seth Rich case came up, Spicer dismissed it and said, you know, I have nothing to do with this. You know, I don't want to hear about it. According to Wheeler's version, interview, in fact, Spicer said, uh, here's my card. You want me to set you up with the Justice Department? I'll set you up with the Justice Department. So, you know, differing accounts as to uh, what happened. Well, in the next bonus episode, we're going to get to a key moment where another character, a journalist, plays an important role in getting this story to Fox News and turning it into from a scoop to a PR nightmare. Exactly. What is the true source of the Seth Rich conspiracy theory, and who should be held accountable? Join us as we get to the bottom of it at news.yahoo.com slash conspiracyland, and subscribe to Conspiracyland on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcasts.